Today's video is sponsored by our good friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, located in Melbourne, Florida. Check out their Facebook live auctions on great deals on back issues and action figures, shipping nationwide. And also our friends at EGS Expert Grading Services, the only grading company that offers unique, customizable labels for your graded comics. And now introducing new EGS Slabs. Welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New TV Road 2. Hi, I'm your presenter, Shabu RU. Well, here we are after much success after issue number one. Wow, I'm shocked on the feedback that we got. And just real quick, I'd like to congratulate Michael, who is the winner of our first giveaway on the channel. And he is getting cover B of issue number one. So congratulations, Michael. And stay tuned. We're going to have more free giveaways coming up. Again, I've been getting comments and feedback and people, how they are pleasantly surprised how this series has captured the look, the feel, the aesthetics of what made the Sunbow series so iconic. Even down to a zany storyline where we have a genie granting wishes to Cobra Commander and his typical fumbling and bumbling of the situation at hand. And back in issue one, and goes without saying, Dan Schoening's artwork, and we got a taste of it during his Untold Tales in the Real American Hero series, you know, a little bit of a preview. I am not surprised. I mean, his drawing is spot on equal to the Sunbow. So here we got all the, and also credit IDW for waiting until they get the right people on board to be able to execute this as wonderfully as they've done. So here we go with the cover variants. Um, I love Tim's cover. I picked up cover B um, as well as uh, cover A, but I always like uh, Tim's artwork. He did it for the one shot of, I think, a yearbook number four. And man, the RI cover is no slouch with FIOP. I think I'm pronouncing that name right. So here we go. It'll be easier if you watch the recap for issue number one, but just to go back real quick, Cobra Commander has discovered a magic lamp with the traditional three wishes. The funny thing is this genie isn't exactly fulfilling the commander's wishes to help him out. Despite being bound to the ordinance of the lamp, he uses every opportunity to goon up the commander and make things a little difficult for him. Using his first wish, he enlarges a squad of Cobra Bats to rain havoc on G.I. Joe HQ. The Joes discovered the same weak spots are present in the Big Bats, they just need a little bit more firepower. Destro and the Baroness come to the rescue, employing a large force field around the sensitive spots to prevent a similar thing from happening again. We ended the first issue with Cobra Commander issuing an ultimatum in typical style to the UN to surrender or pay one billion million dollars. <laughs> Let the insanity begin. In a show of power, the commander has decided to deploy his bats to Tokyo, Washington, and Paris, France. Writer Eric Burnham properly captures the absurdity of villains in the 80s. The Baroness points out, you got a freaking genie. Why don't you just wish for all the money that you want? The commander retorts similarly to Dr. Evil when he talked to Scotty. You just don't get it, do you? We finally see the Crimson Twins enter, leading the assault on Washington. They report that the Joes have also mobilized to meet the ensuing Cobra threat. To ensure total victory, the commander summons the genie for his second wish, asking him to upgrade his troops' weaponry with a fail-safe to not harm me. I think you can see where this is going. So, we head over to Paris, France, where Flint and Lady J lead the defense of that city. Again, you gotta focus on the dialogue coming out of each character and marvel how writer Eric Burnham captures the mere essence of that particular character. Following the same plan of attack, that brought down the first bat that attacked G.I. Joe headquarters, they quickly discovered that this time around, nothing is working, and that some magical force is protecting the once vulnerable spot on the bat. 
Now, as you read these panels, you'll see that the banter going on with characters like Roadblock and even the bromance of Bazooka and Alpine, like it's so in character with what we saw on Sunbow. It makes it uncanny. Well, the similar situations play out at the other cities. Here over in Tokyo, we have like a little homage to Godzilla with the Cobra Bat, like in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by all the battleships. An homage to Godzilla. And speaking of Godzilla, doesn't it feel like it's been like the resurrection of Godzilla with the Godzilla versus Kong? And check out this Godzilla versus Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that just hit the comic shops. Finally, even as a Gen Xer, we see Godzilla versus Dragon Zord, and even I'm excited about checking up on that. Now, flashback to remember Cobra Commander's second wish. As Zartan zero in on the deck of what presumably the USS flag, where Quick Kick and Shipwreck are both manning the 50 cal, Shipwreck says something related to, hey, it's me, and suddenly, you know, he's engulfed in, in flames. But he walks away unscathed. Remember, nothing that will hurt me. Ha <laughs> ha. Cobra Commander is in disbelief. And then the genie is like, hey, you said don't harm anybody that is me. <laughs> anyway, so not even questioning this and just like whatever. Shipwreck jumps into a shark and goes out and continues his... Good luck, good fortune, taking down Cobra Gliders. Now, it'd be funny, just picture a Super Mario once he hits that invisible star like you see here. That's basically what Shipwreck is doing. He's just going around and uh, nothing is touching him. He's, in he's invincible. Okay, so apparently all this time, Scarlet has these force field detecting binoculars. You get that? And it's able to distinguish that the force field is layered. So while a full frontal assault can hurt the bat, a small strategically placed bomb in the hinge joint can. And of course, Duke is the dork to volunteer for this. Diana Davis is going to kill me. Because <laughs> when you add Duke plus the Sunbow series, he's going to end up getting captured. Come on. But Duke was indeed successful. And once Duke was captured again... Cobra Commander doesn't take the logical route and just kill off his greatest enemy. No. He has to bring him back to base so he can uh, eventually escape and signal the others to their secret base. Okay, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Cobra Commander issues a retreat. Baroness Destro and the Crimson twin Twins are upset. They have got G.I. Joe on the ropes, but the Commander reveals his true plan. So while the world and G.I. Joe were engaged with these megabats, his forces were stealing all the gold reserves in the USA, Tokyo, and France. And with the rare win, the Cobra ending on a winning note, the issue ends. Now even though we're two issues in, oh, I just am overwhelmed with how wonderful this series is. Hitting all the right troves giving you all the right feeling. And of course we end with the ridiculous PSA message where a kid is proud about stealing and talks to Snake Eyes. And fight Snake Eyes, of course, doesn't say a word. The kid's like, yeah? Oh yeah, you're right. I should steal. I'll go back and return this thing. <laughs> what a treat. And we end looking forward to issue number three already. All right, and with that, we end, and we have issue number 291 coming up. We're going to do another graded G.I. Joe showcase, hopefully, and um, yeah, I think that's about it. So if you haven't, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time on Codename New Tavira 2. Have a good one, guys.